You are watching the Pan African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want. Unity, consciousness, our culture, our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice. Join my team. Join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa. So, 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 um, greetings, everyone. Greetings, the Pan African Daily TV community and family, and all Africans worldwide, wherever you're connecting from the continent, the diaspora, the UK, the Europe, uh, Haiti, particularly. And um, yes, everywhere that you, freedom fighters, liberators, and uh, Pan Africanese um, are connecting, we want to welcome you on this special edition a day where Africans are sitting around and um, just sharing and paying respect, honoring the passing away of an elder. I mean, elder not in terms of age, but an elder in terms of his work and his engagement and his liberation and his teachings um, uh, to the African people. Um, and I, I still want to quote this uh, quotation of one of our viewers or his followers who said, um, at the time when all of us Africans were sleeping, our elder was busy on the road, uh, searching for wisdom to liberate us, searching and researching for facts and key uh, historical facts about the African people to liberate and wake up, to show us the path. So while we were busy at slumber and resting and even relaxing, he was on the journey being active uh, for his people. And so today we want to pay him our respect. It's not going to be the last one but of course to learn about his works and his engagement from his comrades from his colleagues like professor uh Baina bello that is joining us from haiti and that has known him for a while his work or a personal friend or something like that he she's going to really tell us a lot about who dr Roniko rashida was because a lot of africans particularly on the continent did not have that opportunity to know him in person or to even get engaged in his work so today we are rewriting those footprints of um 
uh, of his eology so that the next generation and the youths and young people around can always grasp on um, um, to share in their groups, in their community, what type of an elder, a ruler, a teacher that we had here. And his work is going to stay here, is going to live on from generation to generation. And that is what very is very particular about a legacy, about working, about uh, being race loyal to your people and serving in this category. We know a lot of people, heroes that have passed on, but they just are forgotten. Nobody would even remember their name. But a hero like this, uh, makes the difference as this is the history. He's going to leave us forever and ever. He's going to live with us. And um, yes, we want to thank also the elders that are coming uh, on, particularly Professor uh, Baina. He has very, she has very short time to be with us today, despite his her own program that she's also doing a tribute and other engagements out there. But she said, no, um, when one of us fall down, we have to gather. We also want to thank uh, King Maponga Joshua that is sharing this platform, like Professor Baina said for the first time, uh, both of them are coming together on a special a very special ceremony like this. We appreciate and we congratulate you. Later on, we also would be joined by Professor uh, James Small and uh, Reverend Dr. Nina Nan Kweku and others that will be signing in to pay their last respect and to share also their condolences with the African community on this passing away. So um, I want to greet you, Professor Baina and uh, King Maponga, and welcome to this um, exclusive show tonight. Professor Thank yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for inviting me, for having me. And we take this moment to greet our brother. He's our younger brother, 66 years old, a hard worker who's gone all over the world. In fact, I think in one of the shows we did together, he mentioned having gone to 125 countries in the world, mm. searching for our artistry, our people, what we did, what we accomplished. So, Brother Dr. Ronoko Rashidi, I greet you. And as I said, when a soldier falls, the others are duty bound to greet you properly and then pick up your weapon and continue. Mm. The fight goes on. Uh, that's a big loss. This is somebody really in the heart of his work. In fact, in one of our program, and maybe I will know how to share this with you, but um, he said, he's a student. That's the most important thing about him. And he loves to learn. And he think as long as you're learning, then you are, you'll never die. So I will never die because I'm learning all the time. Yes. That's that was one of the things he said in December last year. Mm. So Brother Onoko Rashidi, um, a fighter, a hard worker. Uh, we had plans to, we were making plans to write a book together. And, um, you know, so this was, we were stunned. You know, we know, we know none of us are ever ready to receive death, even though we know in IT we say death is um, sleep is death's little brother. So we die a little every day, every time we go to sleep, but we don't stop being surprised, being taken aback every time. And especially when it's somebody younger than you, it, it, it hurts even more. Somebody you work with yesterday um so it it strikes hard but this is um this is a brother who spent all his life doing nothing but searching our information everywhere he goes he went to india he went to asia he went to africa he went to the caribbean in fact the last program we did together that was his choice. He said, you know, we have to do this show together, Sister Baina. You know, I have pictures. I'm going to come with 25, 30 pictures of our freedom fighters all over the world. And we're going to talk about that. That's what we're going to do. <sighs> okay, sure. <laughs> so you want to do a Ronoko Rashidi show on the Baina and Friends show. Fine, let's do it. <laughs> True enough, 
<laughs> because this is someone who's, you know, he's always clear on what he wants and he's very determined. And um, so we did that. Uh, he says, and I want brother, brother James, I want brother James Small to be with us so we can discuss, you know, these pictures. And we did that. And it was a very, very good, very good program. Uh, people who really enjoyed it and we all learned from each other. And that's the great, greatest thing about it is that when we are together, Ronoko, James Small, Baina, when we work together is that we're constantly one teaching the other. Mm -hmm. And we are always one learning from the other. And that's the most wonderful thing about having that kind of people, that type of attitude, one in reaching the other. And that's what he's done uh, every time I've known him. That's always what I have seen, what I have experienced with Brother Ronoko. Brother no Ronoko came to IET, I can't remember, in the 90s somewhere, he visited. And, um, you know, we, we traveled, rough times, rough roads, rough situations. Never heard a peep about some people say, oh, no, that's too much. No. Not him. He said, we gotta see, we gotta see this, I gotta see that. And uh, that's, you know, the kind of person he was, always learning. And Dessaline said in his, in the Constitution, in fact, it is said, um, Dessaline told us that we can choose, when we have to choose the next leader of IET, we must choose on the basis of that person's contribution to freedom. Correct. Contribution to freedom is the highest. He didn't give two, he didn't give three, he didn't give five um, elements to choose a leader by, just your contribution to freedom. And to me, Brother Ronoko fit the bill. All his life and all his work was acquiring the knowledge and sharing the knowledge that would bring us each day closer to being free, to be freer and freer. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to share the little bit that I know about the brother. I remember also being very impressed with him when he talked about his daughter, his eyes light up, his face light up. <laughs> oh, my daughter, my daughter. You know, this is uh, someone who has a great deal of love for, for his family. And um, that's very endearing. So you, you, you're saying, um, you know, in choosing a leader, I mean, like we're giving this over to the young generation. It should not just be somebody that would make political statements about how he wants to elevate the people. This should be something that is already, you see it as a track record of the work for what they've done, saving their race and their people, isn't it? Absolutely. He clearly said that once, you know, whether we choose the next person to lead, to lead the country before or after his death, that person should be chosen on the basis of their contribution to freedom. So we must learn to know what is freedom so we can recognize those who are fighting for freedom. Freedom doesn't mean that you have a gun in your hand. You have to understand that fighting freedom is a daily uh, uh, activity that we can carry on in many, many ways. Um, hmm. That brings me to another example. When we were doing Kreta Piro, the Battle of Kreta Piro with Dr. Rashidi, uh, one of the things that came up is the contribution of women in the fight. And one of the things is that women would take their newborn babies and use them as weapons to do whatever had to be done, like stuff the baby in the mouth of a cannon to stop the cannon from shooting our people. Now, you may have your way of looking at it, but to me, that's the highest sacrifice mm -hmm. that a mother could do, you know, for the larger family to take your 
family and sacrifice. That's a freedom fighter. That's somebody who believes in freedom and who has demonstrated their uh, ability to work or to contribute to freedom. What should the younger people or the generation or everybody that is watching, according to this legacy, be taken as a piece to take away from um, Elder Dr. Ronald Korashide? Well, if I'm not mistaken, he's left about 20 books. Uh -huh. So Dr. Ronald Korashidi has left many books to show us and teach us what he believed in and what, he, what his work was all about. He's also a great admirer of women. You know, there's somebody, you know, the majestic black woman, the, um, you know, everywhere he goes, he, he photographs the woman and he, he talks about the accomplished, those who have accomplished certain things. He has great respect for women. Uh, so I think by buying his books, reading his books is one way that each one of us can better understand who this person is don't just take people's word for it, but he has done enough work for us to go ahead and yeah. we don't know him enough to go ahead and get to know him better. He's done a lot also on the net. He's done, he has a lot of work all over in different forms, different media. So if we want to know what he thinks, we, we have many ways of doing so. He has left a trail Oh, um, it is so sad, like hearing, um, like you said, no one really would say, okay, he has done his work, it's time to go home at the age of 66, um, who does that? But if you look in the past or just in this shorter time, we've lost a lot of them just going like this in this age group. Um, I don't know, do you have a, a feeling like we are living in a particular spatial time? I don't think with times, there are special times. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to, if we understand, we're living in a society today, um, a criminal society. This is the, the society that has, has brought about wholesale slavery on five continents. This is a society that has brought colonization on five continents, if we want to say five, if you know, want to say somewhat on the entire planet. Uh, this is a society that for money will create disease uh, and spread it. This is a society, this, you know, so we have to understand the society in which we're living, mm -hmm. whether things are obvious or less obvious, mm -hmm. it is a criminal society. And in that society, everything is possible. So we have to understand, this is a society who is uh, make it his business, its business to war on nations, to just mm -hmm. create, you know, people, some people could just sit somewhere in their office and decide, oh, they should create a uh, havoc in IT or create havoc in St. Vincent. Uh, let's have a coup d'etat there let's have more people you know let's accuse uh dr tata and Baina. let's put them uh against each other mm -hmm. and they can manipulate they have all the means all the money and all the to do that and they do that so if we understand we in that kind of a society we understand we are in full-fledged war and if we are if people are warring on us and we're not planning anything to fight back. We don't have a program. We're not aware that this is full-fledged war. Then, of course, we're going to count lots of casualties. Because casualties will come in every shape, way, or form. We have to be prepared. And that's why we have to identify and understand when a soldier falls then we have a duty to pick up his weapon and continue the fight. Mm -hmm. I we have to understand that. 
you we wrote almost, immediate um yes go ahead i think we almost have to understand we can't afford to cry we cannot afford to cry mm -hmm. or to be sad because they will use your sadness against you mm. Mm -hmm. You have to pick up the weapon and continue to fight. You, you're touching a very relevant point here. Like um, we are not, if you, if you look at it, that's why particularly women that are in this liberation movement, we turned to be looked upon as women that are very hard, as if we don't have emotions, as if we're not, just because you know that your emotions would be the, I mean, the weapon for the enemy against you, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you see, I'm 73, and it's been a long time since I make up my mind. People's opinions is their own. I have to do what I have to do according to my own objectives. Yes. I cannot afford to be worrying about how Dr. Tata will take it, or yes. this other person, or this other person. I have to be true to Baina. Mm. I share. Yes, yes. That is very, very fundamental. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have less people advocating, less people volunteering. It's not that we have anything against them, like I said. But what is our fault if we have to take this journey or this journey was actually made for us? It's not, what can we be accountable for that, you know, whatever thing, even become even an adversary, not even to the other enemies that we're talking about, the enemies within. So what can we be accountable for, particularly women on this journey, Prof? Well, the way I look at it, life is all about purpose. What is your purpose? Once you set your purpose, then you are accountable to that. Mm. You must do what you must do in order to accomplish, to reach your goal. It's a mm -hmm. must, we have no choice. Uh, I think of people like Cleopatra, 16 years old, parents are dead. Uh, she has to take the lead in the country. It's true she has been prepared all the time. She speaks 16 languages. She knows all about, she's been educated to run the country, mm -hmm. but they were not expecting at 16. Now, when she and her younger brother is nine, now the Romans choose to invade the country at that time mm -hmm. with two little children at the head of the country. They tell us they were fighting. I don't exactly see how the nine-year-old and a 16-year-old, a well-prepared 16-year-old, will be fighting for running the country. But that's what they usually say in history, right? Okay, so the Romans invade. They start stealing. They start doing what they always do. She, she, takes, she is at the head of her army. She fights to defend her country. Her army loses. They put a price on her head. And ultimately, she decides to wrap herself in a carpet and send herself as a gift to the ones who's put a price on her head who has declared that Egypt, uh, the language, you must not speak your language anymore, you must not do, all the temples are closed, every forces of culture is put under, you know, hidden, uh, blocked by the Romans, and a price on the head of Cleopatra. So she goes, she is brought in front of um, Caesar, they roll out the carpet, she comes out and she says, all right, now you have me. I bring me to you. Give me the money. You put a price on my head. Okay. When I look at situation like that, I said, now this is a daring woman. And who knows the first rule of war is surprise is the best weapon. Of course, she won that battle because... Then he start talking to her. He start, you know, eventually will marry her according to her own rule. But look what, marry her where? 
in the temples that he had closed. So therefore, all temples are open. Mm -hmm. uh, marry her in Egyptian outfit. Marry her in Egyptian language. What does this woman do? Was she in love with Caesar? Or was she defending her culture? We have to learn how to read the, the information that comes to us. So here is a young woman who sees she lost the physical military war, but she's mm -hmm. going to take it on another level. And she went on. So there are lessons for us. These are the lessons we must learn. Mm -hmm. And not worry about what people, I'm sure a lot of people say, oh, goodness, Cleopatra, look at this. She's marrying the enemy. Did she? Or did she save the culture, the language, the temples, and okay. the food? I share, Mama. This is, I mean, I just learned it. I never saw it also from this perspective. But of course, there's so many ways where we can liberate our people um, being as a frontliner. Um, immediately, our elder passed away. You send this message for Fondacion Felicity, your organization, to all your networks. And I want to reach a uh, read it out to particularly those that did not get it. And, uh, and, and the, the, the way you you coordinated and the instructions that you gave us to do on that very night was very, very touching. And I'd like us to share with the audience and you can explain. You said, Jambo, greetings, Hotep Lone Alafia family. Baba Ronoko Rashidi transitioned in Cairo on August 2nd, 2021, carrying on his mission dressed in full flesh battle gear. Let each one of us offer him light, water, and fruit with your heartfelt parting word. You know that we are in a planetary war. When one of our brave warriors fall, we are duty bound to properly salute him, then pick up his weapon and march on to victory. The more we are in offering light, water, and sweet to the part of his transition, the easier his journey will be. Continue in knowledge, Sharing, power, warrior, brother Ronoko Rashidi, Ashe, 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 Aibobo, Asante Sana, your sister and queen, Mama Bello of Haiti. I added this one, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> of course. Um, I mean, I'm editing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when you passed on that message, advising us to just do that, send him light, water, and power. Can you just explain um, this, this, this libation or this tradition or this ritual that we should do and keep? In our tradition, uh, first of all, death is only a surprise to those of us who are alive. Mm -hmm. But the person whose transition knows something inside of them, their soul knew and had been preparing. And their soul will continue, uh, is soul doesn't, doesn't go anywhere. Only the body has ceased to leave, but the mm -hmm. soul continues. Mm -hmm. so, and the soul will accompany that body for a while anyway. So then we feed the soul, the light, the water, the sweets, and I didn't think of it then, but uh, speaking to one of uh, our brothers here, um, somebody did mention, you should have put books, Mami Bello. And that's correct. Because learning was the most important thing to his soul. So then putting learning materials, books, notebooks, pencils, whatever, these also are great element to accompany the soul as the soul continues to work for the body. So we are providing what uh, souls can use to carry on because we tend to forget we are an eternal people. 
this thing will go. The flesh and bones that I'm wearing will go mm -hmm. whichever day it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. But Bayina will live forever. Ashe. So as long as one person remembers Bayina and put a light for her, mm. put a glass of water for her, mm. put some sweets for her, mm. her soul will be fed. And that's why, that's what we mean when we talk about being people of uh, uh, who respect ancestors. We always need, naming their name is also another way of feeding the soul. Mm -hmm. Eating, drinking things that we know they like, I may not care for, I don't smoke. But if I knew this person loved to smoke cigars, I will have a cigar for this, for this person mm. because the soul will communicate with the smoke. The smoke will bring information, sense, smoke, taste. All of these are ways that we communicate to the invisible. Mm. So while our brother is still close to us, is good to offer the soul as much as we can. If it was somebody that we knew that loved jewelry, we would offer a piece of jewelry, mm. dresses, clothing. I don't care what it is. Whatever you know this person was particularly attached to, then you want to add that to your libation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing it for 24 hours is good, but if you do it for seven days, that's even better. If you do it Correct. for 21 days, that's even better. Mm -hmm. And regularly, on a regular basis, mm -hmm. either on that person's birthday or on that person, whatever particular day that is important to this person, you can always nourish the soul with those elements. This is the this is fundamental. Immediately you you sent that message. We share it, and then we were thinking, Nisha and I, um, this is a libation. This is a remembering. How do we do it? And I think a lot of people are also asking, like you said, if we do it like that, is it like creating an altar, putting this element, remembering him at particular instances, like for the seven days that we accompany him? How are we supposed to do it? Well, you establish a small table on a yes. cloth, mm -hmm. preferably a purple cloth. Purple. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, white can always also be used, but preferably is purple. If we look at Kemet, we look at in a lot of our traditions, purple was the color that accompanied the soul. Mm -hmm. So uh, we put on a table, a small cloth, and then we put the items, the the light, the water, the sweet, whichever sweet we choose, and uh, books, pencil, in his case, learning uh, materials. Mm -hmm. We could also put a picture, you know, just, and that is more for us to keep us, our intention on him clear. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that every time we pass by, we may want to say something to him. We may mm -hmm. want to speak to, to him every time we, we pass by that table. So it's like keeping the communication going. Um, we have done a celebration for the, the Queen uh, Marie-Louise and Empress Felicité, where we had, we interviewed them. We made an, you know, taking quotes from what they had said, and then we created the questions. Mm -hmm. So we gave them another opportunity to reaffirm what they had already said to us. See, but the biggest problem we have is that we, we have adopted other people's views of fundamental things. Yes. Okay. Uh, so because of this, we tend not to remember that the dead are not dead as Birago Diop told us. Mm. They are in the sound of the wind. They still are in the bushes. They are dead or not dead. Just the body is gone, but the, the person, the soul, the essence is present. So treat it properly. Treat it as you would treat that person. 
if they were in the flesh. Essentially, that's what we do. Okay, uh, we would not. We don't have to say, "Well, I I don't have any money, so I can't go to the funeral." You don't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. A soul is present everywhere. Just set up the proper setting, a picture, some light, water, and then speak to the soul. Tell them, oh, I didn't have a chance to tell so-and-so I was sorry. Well, not too late. Go ahead. Say it. Set up a structure and say it. Speak to that person. Thank you so very much, Ma um, Prof. This is very, very uh, deep. Why? Because, I mean, what is it that, like you say, we've adopted? Um, we know cultures that are saying, oh, that's worshipping the dead, that's doing this. But if that dead was my mother, was a close person, was a brother like this, and I remember him with this substance, what is then evil or wrong about it? Well, you know what? I don't, when, it, when I'm asked questions like that, I said, <laughs> Are those people who slaughtered half the population of the continent of Africa, are these the people talking about lighting a candle and water is evil? The same people who did slavery, who tortured us, who is, are still stealing everything from under our feet, are these people the ones who are telling us what is evil? And we take that seriously? Now, let's be for real. You, so you, you got a brain, you have logic, you have good sense, use it. People yes. who create wars for the heck of it, people who create disease and infect the whole planet, these people would tell me what is evil? Please, I wouldn't even, there is no response. Just, I would say, remember who you are and what you are, have been doing and still doing. Ashe, Queen. Yes. Please. Much respect because you're not just talking, you're acting, you're engaged, you're teaching, you're showing per example, like Dr. Runoiko did. It's not just like we're talking about some illusions about some theories that somebody brought. We're talking about facts, things that are tangible, physical. His books are there. His writings are there. His images are there. His photos going to more than 125 universities in more than how many countries in the world. These are fact and tangible things. I mean, can someone just dream again and tell you something different? Ain't that laziness somehow <laughs> or ignorance that we think? somebody would do that so you're so spot up you put up that light in my face i already was really i didn't know how i was going to pull this tribute the whole day um i've just been weary in bed but you're telling us this is the light and you remember this memory keeps you intact and we see even them that saying is wrong do it all the time so who is fooling who actually to their own thank you so much mom Yes, I thank you. My time is sort of has arrived. I, I thank know. you very much for inviting me. And I thank all of you. Please don't let murderers, wholesale murderers, tell you what is wrong or right. Be kind to you, to, you, to the soul of your departed. Keep the communication going because this is the way our own soul is fed. This is the way we receive their strength when in trouble. This is the way we have more. If let's say we were on a battlefield with 200 soldiers facing uh, the enemy with 1,000 soldiers, well, all of the ones that our soldiers that you have kept in communication with will be part of your troops when you're in trouble. So don't let people separate you from those who have crossed over. They've crossed. They are not dead because spirit never dies. Spirit is forever. 
remember your father, remember your mother, remember your great grandmother, your great, great, great grandmother, and call on them when things get tough. Be blessed. Thank you. Be healthy, be wealthy, and let's build our collective power. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessings and to the program that you're doing. Greetings to our people out there. I know you have a seven hour power show to roll around now and you find time to be with us. We are very, very thankful. You are remembered already. Your legacy is already there. Thank you so much for thank being you. here. Be blessed. Yes. 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 Good. So we are going to continue. And the next guest that has been waiting all along is uh, King Maponga Joshua, um, that has been here also on the same time with uh, Professor Baina. Yes. And um, um, we, we want to remind ourselves that this transition is something that is going to happen to every one of us anytime soon. So it is a process in which sometimes when we gather, we remember ourselves being in that state. So when we remember and we pay honor and respect, please just think about yourself. It's not about Dr. Roneko Rashidi today. We're using just a case study of an ancestor that has transit, uh, transited, yes. But what you should be thinking, what we should be thinking, what we should be paying attention to is us because we are going to take the same journey sooner or later. What would people gather around to say about us, our legacy, our work, our impact, our relationship to creator, to our people, to nature, to humanity? What is it that we would remember when people would gather around? What stories would they say about us? We just listened to Professor Baina gave us this light does it mean that Baba Ronoko did not make some mistakes in his life? Does it mean that, but why does his work, our power, outshadow that? It brings us to a humble state of humanity to remember to be humble and to share a passion with one another. That is the essence of why when one elder transit or one of us, we gather around to learn. We are not pain or is crying for him that is the another trick that is always made in things like this oh this one has passed away we're going to 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 cry him no you're going to cry yourself to cry your life to reflect on your works on your deeds on your mission on your purpose that is the essence of gathering around to pay tribute and respect i think baba maponga is ready with us right here Yes, and he is going to be taking us on, continuing the steps where Professor Baina left and to tell us about this study that he carried, what is the essence to us in our life, and him like a king, and also a freedom fighter, somebody that is, has know. laid down his life for his people, for his work and his engagement. Though a young brother, not an elder like Professor Baina, but he also told us the other day, even when he initiated, that we must come down. We must sit at the table and pay our elder respect, but also we turn to our own lives and the way forward. Baba Maponga, King Maponga, you're welcome. Thank, thank you very much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. And we are here to remember the passing away of a, of a great, a great man. And uh, words, words cannot begin to express our our loss as Africans. Actually, while while Dr. Baila was talking, it just crossed my mind that we need to organize a conference where all the Africans on mainland and in diaspora, we can meet and we appoint leadership, which will discuss issues of reparation, uh, you know, repatriation, and reorganization of the African continent as a whole. Because right now we are working in away from each other. But I think a time has come when we must start coming together and uh, forming up one parliament for Africa, which will be parallel to the African Union, 
and where we can begin to have conversations, meaningful political, economic uh, conversations that uh, will shape our political terrain. And uh, the passing away of Rashid uh, almost um, places us at a moment of loss uh, where we have actually lost a soldier uh, on the battlefront. Thank you so very much, my king. Um, if, you, if you look at the uh, foldings, like what uh, Professor Baena said, a, a situation like this exactly, now you're saying, let's go now to that practice that we're talking about. If we're reflecting on, on, on something that is already visible, we should have been doing it long ago, isn't it? We should put that structure now, not tomorrow, not even, We it has to happen now. Yeah, I'm actually looking at um, Professor Small, I'm looking at Omar. I'm looking at the Black Panther leaders. I'm looking at Jackson. I'm looking at uh, you know all the revolutionaries in diaspora. I'm looking at Professor Lumumba. I'm looking at Dr. Arikana. I'm looking at Julius Malema. I'm looking at Bayern in Uganda. You know, I'm looking in Europe. I'm looking at yourself in Germany. And if you, one could come up with a database of all these Africans who are participating into this space. We should be able to form up a thinking tank which speaks to the political, economic uh, conversation that Africa needs desperately right now. Because as long as we speak, Mulumumba is saying that, Malema is saying that, Maponga is saying that, to the enemy, we look divided. And mm -hmm. uh, they never will take us seriously. But what I am receiving right now on the passing away of uh, Dr. Rashid is that we should have started actually working to have this uh, consolidated body of leaders beginning to talk the African agenda at that level where mm -hmm. we become inclusive and all of us can come together to begin to strategize a process and a way in which we can liberate our people on the mainland and in diaspora. Um, uh, should it be something, because if I look at the, the particular the situation of traveling and issues like that, it's something that we need to um, um, start thinking about. We can also start it virtually, we're already doing anyway, and then we would get to that phase. Now, if you look at his work, you talked about climate, and you know it from the point of what the origin and practical items. Um, what is it that maybe just a sharp thing to the books that he wrote or to his work would tell us about Kemet. You already said it the other day. Or about uh, I, 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 I suggest in your, in your back office, you could, you could begin a database and we can start off with a Zoom conference where all these leaders are together. And the agenda must be very simple. A half a, half a paragraph document that speaks to the consolidation of African power, African politics, African economics, African health, like we spoke the other day, if all of us are functioning in the line of our specialties and we come mm -hmm. together as a body, we should be able to start developing a network and documentation that challenges the present status quo. And if there is anything uh, Dr. Rashid could have done for us, it is to bring us together at such a moment where the idea has just reached me now that we need to, to have a, a Rashid conference which puts us together for that mm -hmm. very conversation of consolidating uh, our our conversation into a united front towards the resuscitation, reconstruction, reparation, and uh, repatriation of the African children, both at home and, and afar. So wh what we say in my tribe is that the dead people talk. And if there's anything that he has said, it is that unity is important even at this hour that we, we start coming together as a people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what, she, what he said, and because I know that you're also preparing uh, something in that, in that part, particularly in taking responsibility for Zimbabwe. And he said, uh, uh, Lake Dessalin said, to elect a leader, you have to look from his works and his engagement uh, for his people. Now, is it really what you're saying? Yes, leaders that are really already engaged it should take up that responsibility. 
Yeah, there's a difference between um, elect electing leaders and appointing leaders. When you elect leaders, you are working on votes. You know, all in favor say aye, all in favor say aye. Then a few people raise up their hands and a few people oppose the idea. Mm. But when you say you are appointing leadership, it is the elders who sit around and they look and they say, you do this for us, you do this for us. There's a difference between an appointed leader and an elected leader. An appointed leader is actually working on the strength of their appointment. They have been asked to perform a certain task, which they will perform. Whereas mm -hmm. elections have to do with campaigning, trying to get into a space of power. Right now, we're not looking for power. We're looking for efficiency. We're looking for uh, ability. We're looking for function. And if anyone should be able to operate onto this space, it's not that you must campaign. Okay, I'm campaigning because I want to become the president of the Africa Africa thing. I want to campaign because I want to become... That's not correct methods of African leadership. If mm -hmm. the elders that I've mentioned can come together and they can agree that so and so can lead us, we appoint someone to lead us. It is better than us electing. Because someone who is appointed can be accountable to the people that have appointed him. Mm -hmm. But if he is elected... He tells you that people have elected me and I'm not accountable to you and I'm accountable to the people whom he never meets. Look at our political structures where leaders are elected and what do they do after election? That's the last time you see them in a village and there's no accountability. But appointment has to do with the connection with the main structure that gave you power. So I think yeah. that in Africa, we used to appoint our leaders rather than elect our leaders. I think... Correct. Thank you. That's very okay. That's very okay because I think that's also one of the uh, topics that we'll be talking about, appointees and elections. Uh, I mean, how did we get into this uh, structure that we're already in, bouncing on it like that? And you're saying something very, very practical. I mean, I, I like this other perception of, you know, this tribute to say, now um, uh, Dr. Rashidi already acted and given us the possibility to unite and to connect. And each time one leaves, it reminds us on the need for us to get more engaged, for us to also catch up with the time before we leave and do something to leave behind. It is not just kind of put our hands in the head, well, and say, oh, he's gone. He has made it big time. Now, what are we that are leaving behind? I think that's the practical approach that you want us to just move on and do something that will also be remembered or gathered around to do, right? Yes, I mean, if you look at the passing away of uh, um, Dr. Magufuli, you look at the passing away of Mwami Gaddafi, you look at the passing away of uh, Robert Mugabe, you look at the passing away of Lumumba's, you passing away of Kenneth Kaunda, you look at all these elders that are going, and they are going without, without telling us who is the who is who is the other person, who is whom, whom they can actually appoint to, to 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 take us across, and one by one they're falling apart. And I'm saying when we still have them in our hands, it will be important that we begin a conversation, and we, we transform ourselves from election of leaders into a new era where as Africans we appoint our leaders in cooperation with our elders. And I think that makes a great sense. If right now you walk up into communities and you meet up the elders and say, who in this community must lead you? The person might not be educated. The person might not have enough money. The person might not have any reputation. But surely the elders of the community will know and they surely know whose heart is with the people. And with that understanding, their appointments are always accurate. As they say, the young people might move faster, but the old people know the path. <laughs> so you may think that as young people, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll WhatsApp, we will uh, we'll internet, we will, we will Wi-Fi, we will Wi-Fi. But after all that stuff, the path that you are going to be walking on is nothing that you know. But the old people surely know the path in as much as the young people may have the speed. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it, it, it's encouraging, particularly in times like this. If you look at how many have just, you know, um, it was appalling when I read this comment on the on the show yesterday. Like, I mean, in in a short space of time, how many leaders we're lead, uh, we're, we're losing so so fast. It's like the, the, the faster, the faster we should also run and step up the game rather than thinking that we have time or we need time to do this or we need time to do this. Who's going to be walking that? So I really appreciate and I truly appreciate. Um, the next aspect is the transition into the land of the ancestries. Like I know that you're king and you do some rituals. Professor Baena had already talked about the communication, but we also know from the theology or the methods that you know being a priest is like you know it's dead. Dead means gone, forgotten, forget, go on with your life. You your mother your brother your sister your husband your relative passes away no 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 they already gone they're never gonna come back they never you don't have anything to think about just move is that in our spirituality do you just forget yes in, in our in our culture in the south in men of the tribes of the south when a close relative passes away particularly family when they pass away then you call the whole family, the close family, and then they shave off their heads. They shave off their hair. You know, they remove all the hair on their heads to, as it were, to remove the old memories, cut out the signals, and allow a new signal to grow. As it were, the growth of the new hair begins a new line of communication, a new dispensation of uh, communication and uh, when a person has passed on, then after one year, then they would be calling the entire family together to say now he has, uh, his bones and his flesh has disappeared, but now we can restore him as a spirit back into the homestead. Then there's a particular ceremony that is done to re-welcome the deceased back into the family, the beating of drums, the brewing of traditional uh, beers and etc and the totems and the celebration and the, basically the reincarnation. In some certain cases, when they do those rituals, another young person, another mature person could actually end up being fully possessed by the spirit of the one that they've invited back into the family. And then they would speak and say what they want and what they wish to happen to the family as they are distributing his clothes, as they are distributing his cattle, uh, whether it is wife or the husband. So we, we, we actually, in our southern kingdoms, have a direct link with the, with the deceased so that there's no disjoint. We have a year to mourn, and in the same wavelength, a wife is not allowed to marry another husband or marry another man or sleep with another man for that one year while the husband is passed on so that you allow the aroma in the house, the aura, the perfume, and the whole member of the person to go past before you can get, get engaged in another relationship. Which men of all young women, women in the present day might seem to think it is a waste of time. They will bury a husband today, next week they have a husband. And you, you wonder, you, you just buried John, you are now married to Peter, and when you are sleeping with them, you call them John. And you are calling your old husband who has just passed away. And, but the African culture already had it in mind that when you have lost someone, allow a moment of mourning, Allow a moment of passing, deal with your emotions, stay away from any emotional engagement until you are fully detached from the person who was with you. Then you can begin your new life as it were. And in a Shona culture, for example, in some of the Central African cultures, then you'll have a dish of water in your hand. Then you'll have a knob carries in your hand and a spear and a sword. Then all the men will be sitting around there. Then as a woman, you have the power to choose whom you want to inherit you as a wife. And if you don't want any one of them to inherit you as a wife, you take the dish of water and you go and wash your son's feet or your, your son's hands. Then you are saying to the whole family, I want to stay single for the rest of my life. And when you have made that decision, then let's, make, let's be sure that you are not going to be bringing boyfriends into this homestead. Because we fully understand that after the passing away of your husband, you already have the liability of our family as one of us, maybe four children, maybe five children. Mm -hmm. We cannot push you away because of Christianity that you are going to go on the street and end up being a girlfriend to another man 
who will violate you and stuff like that. So the culture already had that concept that mm -hmm. in the passing away of your husband, you can choose one of the uncles, one of the brothers of the husband to look after you within the homestead. Or you don't want anything. Then in that case, you may have to end up identifying your son, whom you say, this one will be my husband, but we know you will not be sleeping with your son, but you'll have made a declaration that you're going to remain single. As such, the estate of your husband, his cattle, his cows, and his home will not be tampered with because it is you who has an inheritance for his children within the homestead. But it was only wrong that you can bring another foreign surname, another foreign husband to come and inherit the inheritance of a husband who belonged to another totem. So in the Central African tribes here, that's how basically we would, we would be mourning our, our, our passed away uh, relatives, particularly when it comes to the passing away of a patriarch. Absolutely awesome. I mean, I saw this when I was growing up, shaving of the hair and, um, you know, uh, after one year coming again to distribute, but I never really understood why. But now you've made it so clear and we are really, really thankful, uh, King Maponga, for that explanation. I know that you're on the way, you are driving, and is that really... Yes, um, my, kid, my, kid finished up late. my kids finished up late. I must drive for an hour out of town, but this was important. I said, yes. even if I'm on the road, I'll try as much as possible just to moan the passing away of a, of a Dr. Rashid. But yes. uh, if we get cut off, please understand that I am actually uh, driving. And uh, I'm sorry to the audience. I should have been in my office. This will have been very important. But uh, wife and kids have some function out of town and I have to go and drop them there. It is okay. It is very okay, my king. I think you are, you have said and you've paid your respect. You have shown us and you've educated us on, on that. That's enough honor and, and that you're celebrating with us. So thank you. Drive safely and continue. We're not going to keep you live while you're driving. That's very risky. And carrying a whole family, a whole generation, a whole nation with you, that is even much more, <laughs> I think, uh, yes. I just realized it, and it's it's not fair. So thank you very much. I know Professor James Small is sitting right here also to take his seat. Thank you. Send my, send my greetings to Dr. Small. Uh, tell him I'm with him. I'll try when I, if I arrive early to log in on the Facebook page and uh, follow also. But uh, we are greatly saddened in the South. Uh, by the passing away of the doctor. I wish someone in the office can consolidate his Facebook pages, his YouTube pages, and uh, create a learning portal so that the young people that are coming up at the press of a button, they can have access to the information that he was sharing together with uh, Dr. Clark, together with uh, Marcus Gavi, together. Sooner or later, we need to have an African library where all this information can be available at the right time books and educational institutions must be plugging into these sources so that mm -hmm. our next generation of children can actually have the correct information and correct history to shape up our own narrative. I thank you. Thank you so very much, my king. Drive safely and come home safely. Greetings to the family out there. It's been a pleasure having you. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, yes, we have our next uh, elder brother, um, warrior sitting right here ready to take his seat and uh, to share the legacy of uh, dr rashidi and with us all we are happy to have you professor james small i know i just cut you off from another function that you you've been involved in since morning and you're still going to continue but it's a wonderful pleasure to say um uh, yeah you you sacrifice a lot we can't say that enough and is yeah it, it, it's who you are thank you for being us uh, being with us today thank you for joining greetings greetings dr tata and it was good to hear king maponga um just tell you how the culture works um and in telling that he's put the family at the foundation of culture you know we think the relationship between the man and the woman is the foundation no that is just the linkage it is the family that's the foundation. And we all play a role in making that happen. And it is for the purpose of the children, the next generation. Mm -hmm. And we know Dr. Rashidi have a 14 year old daughter. Um, 
and he has two sisters, one younger than him, Sister Carol, and one older than him. I think her name is Regina. Um, but he has even more family, but those are the three closest, his two sisters in California and his daughter who lives with her mom in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, and I know he was very close with his daughter, you know. And um, the king spoke about his work. And Dr. Rashidi, it gave us a body of work that no one else has duplicated in our history. He visited 125 countries to document the African presence in those mm -hmm. spaces. He visited more than 100 museums to document the African presence in those museums. Mm -hmm. And that makes up the body of work in the forms of films and video, but mostly films of his history journalism and his uh, social journalism, his anthropological journalism of African history. No one has ever done this. Um, he's authored more than I think six or more books. And mm -hmm. three of them focus very directly <clears throat> on this large body of knowledge that he has preserved in film for our people. Imagine how many persons realize when he did his research of uh, the African presence in Asia that there is an African pre-Chinese civilization. There is an African pre-Cambodian civilization. Hmm. An African pre-Thailand civilization. In Thailand, in Cambodia, we built mega temples and mega statues of ourselves that are still there. And he went there and he filmed these things. He went to Australia with the Aborigine and he lived among them and he listened to their stories and he filmed them, tell their stories. He went to Southern India among the Dalit people and he captured their history in film. These are the African people who are the foundation people of India, you know, hmm. and he supported their struggle. He visited Europe and showed that the, some of the early leaders bishop of the Catholic Church were African men. He went to churches throughout Russia and other parts of Europe, showing that the majority of Madonnas were black Madonnas, not white Madonnas, that are still in the churches of Europe, the church in Spain, the churches in Brazil, the churches in Puerto Rico. No one has done this, you know. Hmm. to show the foundation African population that we are the Genesis people of the world. We are the Aborigine even in Europe. Before they were white Europeans, they were black Europeans. He's recorded all of this in his works. You know, a most extraordinary scholar. And the area he chose to work in to, to do the film documentation of African presence on the entire globe. Could you imagine that? The travel to over 125 countries. No wonder he was tired. Wow. You know? But he did it. To go into more than 100 museums all over Europe and America and photograph the ancient African sculptures and art that have been stolen out of Africa by Europe and the Americans, but he did it and he's got them and they're in his books. And so we need to go to his website, you know, Dr. Renoka Rashidi, um, dot com. It shouldn't be difficult to find it or go to Amazon. And we need to buy these books up before it's gone off of the market for our children, for our libraries. Um, People like Dr. Rashidi, and sadly, I was supposed to be in Egypt with him, but because of the pending knee surgery, I had to cancel. Mm -hmm. There was another brother, Brother Rumesu, 
who does most of my security for the last decade, he was also supposed to be with us. Well, he too died on Wednesday oh. from COVID. So my life has been a little bit upside down this week. Um, he was one of my closest sons. Um, him and Renoko were close brothers. And he was to join Renoko in my stead. But he couldn't go because he got sick. And he has also passed away. Oh, our condolences, bro. But these things happen. It's called life. And I think um, the king has explained process. We come and we go. We are first the unborn, then we're the born, then we're the baby, then we're the child, then we're the adolescent, then we are the young adult. And then we are the adult, and then we are the junior elder, then we are the elder, then we are the ancestor, and then we are the unborn again. And that's the way it works. None of us want to leave. We get very attached to the earth and these bodies. But my beautiful queen sitting in front of me, you will one day make your transition. I will one day make my transition. And we should teach the process as normal even though we still hurt with sadness when we lose uh, someone. Um, but it is a normal process that has gone on since the beginning of time, even before, because they can, we don't know the concept of beginning of time. And African cosmology don't have a beginning and it doesn't have an end. It has a constant, constant recreation of itself. Mm -hmm. And so right now, Renoko has come to earth, and as the Yoruba say, he spoke to God before coming, was given his destiny assignment, he fulfilled his destiny assignment, and he has returned to God. And when you see his body of work, when you see the literature he's produced, when you see over the 50,000 photographs that he's taken, then you know he has produced his destiny. He completed his destiny. Absolute. So to return to the source. Um, I'm sure the ancestors are happy that one of their sons have returned and he had created his mission as they sent him to do. And we should all be happy for him that he accomplished so much in 67 years. Yes. In 67 years to accomplish that much work, 125 countries. When wow. did he have time to, to rest? Over 100 museums, over 50,000 films, multiple books, six or eight books. Um, working with Dr. Ivan Ben Serdema, Dr. Yosef, Yosef Ben Yakin, and Dr. Mark, Dr. Jeffries. Um, Dr. Theophila Banga, um, once there was an occasion in a conference in Senegal about hmm, eight, nine years ago, I know President Wad was the president at the time. Mm -hmm. And there was an international conference on African history and scholarship. And Dr. Wad was chairing this conclave of African presidents and other um, high-ranking officials and professors from around the world. Mm -hmm. And he got a call that he had to go to the airport because three other heads of state had just landed. And he looked around the audience and he saw Renoko Rashidi and he called Renoko Rashidi to the stage, held up his book and told the people why. He's handing his scepter as chairman to Dr. Renoko Rashidi in his absence. That's how highly thought of he was that a president of a nation could choose him over other presidents to chair an extraordinary uh, convocation of African heads of states and scholar while he go to the airport to meet other heads of states. That was Dr. Renoko Rashidi, an extraordinary man. And if you go to Facebook on any given day, he had the most beautiful photograph of African women from all over Africa, Cameroon, Sudan, Ethiopia, Congo, Ghana, Nigeria, um, 
And every day he had this beautiful praise commentary for mm -hmm. the African woman, the most extraordinary lover of the African female's integrity. And he stated it every day, every single day. So um, I know I can't stay long. I wanted to spend the whole day with you. But after losing the young brother, um, Ramesu, right behind losing, um, and I hate to say lose, but we have to let them go, Dr. Renoko, And just before that, Dr. Paul Goss, who was one of our herbologists, even before Dr. Sebi. You know, he left on Sunday, Renoko left on Monday, and Ramesu had his 56th birthday on Tuesday and then depart for the ancestor world on Wednesday. Renoko had his birthday just before going to Africa on Saturday. You know, he arrived in Ghana, um, Egypt on Saturday, and he departed for the ancestors on Monday. So that trip that he was on was a part of my tour as well. So some of the persons that went to Ghana and then left Ghana to join uh, Dr. Rasidi in Egypt. Um, and Ramesu, the brother who left on Wednesday for the ancestors, he was to join Dr. Rashidi in my place. So it's been a kind of an emotional whirlwind um, to try and keep everything balanced. And today also we have a naming for one of my granddaughters. So I have to join them shortly. Mm -hmm. um, but Dr. Rashidi's work, his body of work, um, his work and his writings that he did with Dr. Ivan Van Sertema in the Journal of African, what is it called? Um, and I got copies of it too here. A Journals of African Civilization. Mm -hmm. so that's some of his earliest work. But he wasn't just a photographer, but he was also a, an excellent writer. You know, he was a professor at, at the university in Southern California for many years. Um, he traveled all over America, teaching in schools, teaching in community events, using the photographs of our culture and history to reach the young people. You know, young people today, they like the visual a lot more than say maybe my generation who was always in a book. Um, but the visual is also a very good book. And Dr. Rashidi kind of pioneered that using the visual to tell our historical um, past to the young people. And when you're talking about over 50,000 photographs, you're talking about a library and a museum unto itself. And he sat on the board of the Pan-African World Museum in Ghana, headed by mm -hmm. Dr. Kojo Yanka. And he was supposed to present yesterday at that conference. He was the keynote speaker. Oh, but instead they had to turn yesterday into a memorial for him. Mm. He had planned to give much of his uh, library to the museum in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I hope that that happens. Um, and but I ask people now to support his family as much as you can. You'll see <clears> things <throat> coming up on the different websites. Go to the site of Anthony Browder, Dr. Tony Browder. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that's concerning uh, Baba Rashidi will be on the site of Dr. Anthony Browder or just mm -hmm. Tony Browder or the ASA Project, A-S-A, ASA Project. Um, or you can even go to my site, professorsmallafricanworld.com and you will see whatever information is that the family is now putting forward. I think the, the bureaucracy and protocols that was necessary to move the body from Cairo back to America should have taken place. And hopefully the body should have landed today um, because you know you had to go through the American embassy, you had to go through the hospital and the medical examiners and the undertakers in Cairo. 
and they had to turn that body over to the American embassy. But his fiance was beside, but at his side when he passed. He wasn't alone. Um, and his assistant was at his side when he passed. And he was able to, you know, greet the group tour group he was taking um, before he went to the hospital in Cairo. So he wasn't alone. Um, <laughs> now we're just awaiting his body's return to America so that the family can then make the plans on whatever funeral service or memorial service they're going to have. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to know about. But the key thing to know is that this extraordinary man traveled to 125 countries on our behalf to take photographs of our presence in the different parts of the world and to preserve those documents in books for posterity. No one has ever done that in the history of the world. No one, black or white or Asian. That's an extraordinary contribution, an extraordinary contribution. I'm very, um very happy that you're sharing this information about uh, the support because I saw it on on Anthony Brothers uh, uh, web page, but they posted uh, even a flyer on your page, Professor Small's World. And um, I, I wrote yesterday, last night and this morning in asking for more information and someone that could actually educate the audience on that. I think um, someone wrote back and said they, they're still putting out uh, the structure together, but I could see there was already a tele, a cash up and a donation um, uh, contacts uh, to that right. to that flyer. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it before the time of the show or to mm -hmm. download it, to share it here, but we will be doing it respectively. It means for any one of us that is watching that will want to support this project. And I think it, they had the two projects, uh, particularly the museum, uh, the library that mm -hmm. they're putting up as a legacy for him. And that's what uh, uh, King Maponga was just saying a couple of minutes that we have to put this library together. And so we're looking mm -hmm. forward to every support to make this work. If you really it could support this process right now as we're talking, please go to um, uh, 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 Anthony Brothers' page because that's where I saw he shared on your page yeah. of Professor James yeah. Small, well, like he's saying, that would be very great. But we would keep sharing that information here in as much as we get the plier, we get the contact to donations and stuff like that, then we will share it because we think it's very, very important. It's not just only sharing that legacy, but keeping it on the legacy to continue this work that he put out there. So yes. thank you that you even mentioned that, Professor James. Yes, because that body of work is just, it's extraordinary. The man documents our presence in the four corners of the earth. No one has ever done that. Dr. J.A. Rogers tried it, but what Dr. Rogers did was pale to what Dr. Rashidi has managed to do with the camera and with his personal body that he wore out trying to capture the history of African people. And he did. When you see the photographs of our culture, of our women, of our children, of our ancient ancestors, of our monuments, of our sculptures, of our symbols. There's nothing like it in the world in one place. Nothing. Hmm. All the museums we've got in Africa put together doesn't represent one third of what he's accomplished. That must be in a museum and library and then duplicated across the African world. Correct. Absolute. Mm -hmm. I mean, we will do everything to keep this. We will do everything to support. I mean, it's not just a one-time support. I think it's a continuous process. So yeah. um, yeah. we are not saying that you just go or we just donate a, a $50 or 100. It's a process that we have to keep. And I think if we're looking for a museum or a or a library we've been talking about putting books together and stuff. This is the beginning. This is where we should start to honor this legacy, like, you know, Dr. Rokono Rashidi's museum and the African history. And so every other thing should be built on this. Do you think it's the right time that, and, and this is the message that the ancestors are passing yeah. on us to do? Because we've been I, talking about it. Yeah, I think 
you know, sometimes we talk, but then the ancestors show us. And yes. I think this is an occasion where the ancestor is showing us, OK, stop talking now. Do this. And the museum in, in Ghana, um, of which he's one of the board members, is being built. They're having a conference right now, today, as we speak, which he was to be a part of. OK. Um, the ground is already broken. The building is coming up. You know, and uh, it's Baba um, Kojo Yanka is the leading instrument there. Mm -hmm. He's a former member of parliament in Ghana, a regional minister of both the central region and the Ashanti region, one of the founders of um, Panifest and Emancipation Day in Ghana. And he's also the chancellor of a university that he created in Accra. So he's quite qualified. And that was the man that Renoko Rashidi was partnering with, along with the African Heritage Studies Association, mm -hmm. and trying to move this project of the museum forward. Wow. I mean, how much more can we be thankful or can we be grateful in this area and space you know, an, an, an ancestor or an elder transiting, but leaving behind this monument. I mean, things, I mean, it, it's it's wonderful. I don't know how we can thank him. I don't know how we can even thank God, our creator. I don't know how we can thank our ancestors. But the way we thank him is to help the project to come to fruition and become yes. reality. Yes. So, yes. Dr. Tata, you must forgive me. I am going to have to run. It's you okay. Know, I, I could spend two days with you just talking about our culture, our history, and the politics. Um, but this week has put a lot of burden um, my way, and I've got to fulfill the, all of them to the degree that I can. Thank you so very much. I mean, you you did just what you were here to do. And of course, we also will be rounding up. We have one guest, and I think he's not even ready now. He's still in another conference, so we'll have to uh, round up the conversation. But we're thanking you so much. And our love, peace, Thank and you. blessings to you, and even to the other ceremonies and the other brothers that have transisted. Please, our condolences, and um, yeah, to the families and the loved ones. Thank you so very much, Professor Thank James. You, Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Peace and blessings to the Pan African Daily TV family. Yes, thank you so much. Good. So I think um, um, I want to also, on the behalf of the Pan African Daily TV family here, all of you that have joined in, all of us that are, watch, uh, are watching, all of that has paid uh, this, uh, taken out this time to just listen to these three keynote speakers deliver us um, uh, a message or a legacy on eology of whom he, he was. I think this is the beginning. It's not going to be the end. So we don't need to roll out. As we see, most of them had all the commitments, but they took that time, that precious time up to come here, um, give us a little bit of an idea. And the last presentation that we had from Professor James just cloned everything up. It covers everything that this is a monument. This is a precious gift to us as Africans that are still alive. And even when we would go into our children. Now, what are we leaving? What are we making use of it? Are we going to dust that museum, put everything there, that spirit of him inside and give it up as a passation, as a wonderful present that has been packaged for 125 countries going out to put 20 books. I have it here, author and editor of more than 20 books and has traveled and lectured in more than 10 countries. Who dares give that? Who sacrifice a lot? Now, when we talk of even about material like uh, materialism and wealth, how can, uh, show me one billionaire, as we call the material wealthy ones, that could break this kind of a record. That's the kind of work that nobody talks and that money and that world speaks about. But this the generational world that one single elder took upon his life for 67 years. Imagine 67 years, we're saying 67 years of existence, but imagine the time he was conceived, born and take reduce that. So he did this incredible work and a gift to our generation, to our children unbeatable, no politician, no leader in the continent 
no, I mean, no, no, no one would say I rule a country for this number. I've done it to this number of people and leaving this kind of legacy. We are more than thankful, more than just humble and more than grateful to all of us to have this elder. Now, all of you should be doing one thing now. We're going to flood that homepage of his and that YouTube to get more knowledge, to give him thanks, to honor him and to share it. By sharing it, we're just thanking him for that job done. So thank you so very much for being here. I'm very thankful that we all respected this uh, invitation. Uh, uh, Dr. Reverend Ninani is saying he's in another a Zoom now on the same matter. And you can see, I think there are three tributes going on right now as we're talking about uh, Dr. Rashidi right now presently. And to get all of you and these thousand viewers now from the different platform watching this particular one, you can imagine how many also. And I can guarantee you it's not going to stop today. We're going to continue because we're going to take each of those books, each of those projects that he has done to put the footprint of our people around the four corners of the globe and to leave a legacy like this. My people, we are more than rich and blessed. We are more than just blessed. So I don't think closing this chapter is going to get us to start saying, oh, they did this to us again. We'll just be talking about that and laughing because now we have the real work, the real gift. What are we going to make of this gift than complain? We're going to grasp it with all our energy and tap into this knowledge, connect ourselves, unite ourselves, heal ourselves, build ourselves, and just move. When we're transiting, we should be celebrating each and every one of us. Okay. So I thank you so much. We're going to see us on Tuesday. Tomorrow we are off. Monday we are off. Tuesday is going to be another wonderful pleasure to sit here and smile at one another. Thank you so much, beautiful people. Yes, thank you. Ia is saying thank you. He's the one doing the technique tonight. Uh, um, uh, I, I'm so sorry. I'm just mixing up. Only Rashidi comes in my mouth. Rashidi, Rashidi is saying thank you. Yes, he has been with us here. He's been happy with all the message that we're sharing about him. Nasha is also thanking all of us for being here. Patrick is also thanking all of us. We'll be doing productions on these three speakers and dropping it on our YouTube channel and the other channel. So thank you. Take care of yourself. Now you have enough reason to smile, right? You have enough reason to stand up and jump. No more weary, no more sorrow, no more complaints, no more I don't have this, I don't have that. You have everything, everything. You're the most wealthiest people that God ever created and chosen in his own image. Look at the earth. It is your color. There's been no other color that the earth reminds of us. Okay. So that is who we are. Humanity first, people first, and us first. Thank you so much. Blessings. Bye-bye. See you. You are watching the Pan-African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want, unity, consciousness, our culture, our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice, join my team, join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan-African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa.